And boy, they did it with Soler hitting that home run uh, right out of the gate, third pitch of the game. This is after there was a lot of questions about the lineup. He let Soler lead off, move Rosario down there, uh, with uh, moved him down in the lineup after he had been done been so good against the uh, against the Dodgers in Milwaukee. But he puts Soler in the leadoff spot, and what's he do against the lefty right out of the gate? Hits the ball nine miles, well not nine miles, but it's a line drive to left. The Crawford boxes and gets uh, the Braves off to a good start, like they never missed a beat from the series against the Dodgers, and then they scored five runs in the first two and a half innings of the game. The game crawled from there on in, which we'll get to in a minute, but uh, the Braves, uh, you know, I, I don't want to say comfortably, because there were a couple of occasions where a base hit by Houston in a big spot would have made it very, very interesting. They didn't get that base hit, and the Braves did what they had to do to get through the game, but, uh, you know, one, again, six to two, uh, you know, and, and of course put themselves now a leg up as far as the, uh, the World Series series is concerned. A couple things about it. Number one, first off, uh, in the wild card era, in the last 26 World Series, the winner of game one has won 21 of the time. So uh, if you like those kind of numbers, the game one winner in World Series play since 95 is 21 and 5. That's the first thing. Overall, I think it's about 60%. Uh, the game one winner, I think it's 64%. I think overall, uh, if you win that first game. So, I mean, that gives you a leg up when you win in game one. Ironically enough, Houston has played in now uh, four World Series uh, uh, since the franchise was, uh, was, was found in 1960. And in all the World Series play, they've lost the opening game. They lost the opening game in 05 to the White Sox. They lost, of course, two years ago to these to the Nationals. And Kershaw beat them in 2017 uh, out in Dodger Stadium in Game One. That's the series, of course, they won in seven. So they are one and two in previous uh, World Series in which they've lost the opener. Let's see if they can get back to 500 today. So that's uh, that, that's number one. Um, uh, you like the way the Braves hit. You like the way they hit the ball out of the ballpark. Uh, you like the way the Braves played energy defense along the infield. Sure, Swanson made an error on a hard ground ball, but boy, Albies is wonderful at second. Raleigh's a very good defensive third baseman. He picked up a short hop. Uh, you know, they have done an excellent, and Albies makes every play, including that one in the first inning off Tucker. I mean, it wasn't a sensational play, but it's a play that you can bobble and mess up and, 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 and cost your team a run or two when he went deep into the short right field area and threw out Tucker on that hard ground ball. The base was loaded in the bottom of the first inning. They play excellent defense. Throw in Rosario, who made a nice throw on a Gurriel. Double off the left field wall. Would have been a double. I don't blame Gurriel on that. You have to run. and hit it so far. Took a good carom. A bad slide, but as far as him taking the extra base down by a ton of runs, you can't blame him on that. Um, that you know, that I can understand if that was the monster and left with Fenway. Maybe a little different. I mean, he hit that ball way out there at the 399 foot sign and almost left the ballpark at the Papa John's deal out left center in his Ball. I, I can't blame him for getting thrown out at second base. In hindsight, obviously, maybe a little more conservative when you're down by so many runs. Uh, uh, but uh, you can't blame him. Uh, that's just another example of what Atlanta did from a defensive perspective, uh, and they end up winning the ball game. Uh, you know, yeah, Odorizzi did a good job. The Braves' offense kind of got very quiet in the last five, six innings. That can happen a lot when you score a lot of runs early in these games. They sort of settle down. I don't know if I make too big a read on that. Uh, you know, we saw the Red Sox do that, though, in game four, where where they hit two runs in the first inning on a Bogart's home run off Greinke. And then from the rest of the World Series, they didn't score. The rest of that series, they didn't score. So you don't like those six innings, basically. They got the one run on the sack fly. But you don't like the six innings of really quietness from the Atlanta offense. But they had did, they did what they had to do and win the game going away. Uh, from a Houston perspective, obviously, the they had some good at-bats against Matzik. And they had some good at-bats against uh, Will Smith late in the game. Uh, they were competitive hit the ball hard at bats. Even their foul balls were competitive. So that's something you consider if you're an Astro fan. You had good swings against those two guys in that bullpen. Now Jackson pitched well. Minter was very, very good. But against the other two guys, you had some success. Uh, that is the first thing you like about Houston. And you don't like this from an injury standpoint, but let's not forget that Morton gets... Uh, now, Morton, by the way, pitched with a broken leg. He threw like 16 pitches with a broken leg after that hard ground ball, but no Morton now for them uh, the rest of the way. I don't want to read too much into it because it might only be one start, a game five
five, but, uh, you know, they're not going to have him now in Atlanta in the fifth game. And if they ever got to a seventh game out of relief, they wouldn't have him there either. So that is something to consider. Uh, that's a, you know, that's a tough break for Atlanta, losing Morton, who's obviously been very good in postseason play for a long period of time. And uh, was about to really get into the game, settled into the game last night before that ground ball off his uh, shin. He was well on his way. So keep that in mind here, too. So Houston now finds themselves in a must-win game. I mean, Arquiti's pitching tonight against Freed. Freed, of course, been a very good pitcher, uh, really, in his first couple of years in the big leagues. The thing about Freed that would make you a little concerned here right now um, is the fact that, uh, you know, the thing that would make you concerned about Freed right now is uh, he was not good against the Dodgers last uh, Thursday night in L.A. Gave up a ton of runs. And also the right-hand inning Astro team in this small little ballpark, that would make you a little concerned as well. But, uh, you know, you got to figure a pitching matchup goes to the Braves tonight where Kitty was very bad in game three in Fenway. He gave up a bunch of runs, didn't get out of the second inning. Uh, he was very good against the Nationals in a big game up in D.C. in Game 4 a couple of years ago uh, when they got even in that best of seven two all, but he wasn't very good uh, against, and he, you know, he's been spotty all year. You know, he's sort of a swing man and a long relief and maybe a fifth starter. Well, now he's pitching a very, very important game. They moved him up, uh, you know, because he was sort of on rest. They want to maybe give Garcia another day. So we'll see how it works here in this ballpark. Garcia will go game three. The thing I would say about it is if uh, they don't win tonight, Atlanta's not winning. A, uh, Houston's not winning a series. Uh, I know Houston came back and they won three in a row in uh, Washington a couple years ago when they were 2-0 down. But they had Cole in one of those three games. Uh, it's a a little different. They're not going to do that. Too. Just like the the Dodgers are not going to beat the Braves twice in a row, three games to one down after they did it last year. This year, same scenario. That was going to be tricky to do. Very hard to do that if you're used in to win three straight road games in a World Series when you lose the first two in your building. So I would advise the Astros to get the game tonight and put themselves in a spot where they can have a long series. I, I mean, I'm not sure... Uh, who do I, I mean, uh, you know, uh, I think Atlanta's in excellent shape. Uh, I'm going to tell you right now, I could see Atlanta winning a series in five games. I think Atlanta's in very, very good shape. I, I mean, Houston, I respect a lot. We all have to. They're going to win probably a game in Atlanta, but they won't win two. Uh, and I think Atlanta could win this series in five games. We're going to know a lot tonight. Houston wins tonight. And you know, at 11 o'clock tonight, it's 1-1. You know, this is going to take a long time. They're going to be here four or five more games. I mean, it's all there is to it. Eddie's dying to get the hell out of here because he's sticking the World Series and players blowing him off and managers not interested and PR directors and staff saying, who are you? And uh, media credentials that don't work getting into the ballpark until 2 o'clock instead of 1 o'clock and then hearing from the sheriff and Cohen and, and, and Tory about where, what you're doing, how come no guests and everything else when he's getting obliterated by the MLB radio network on a day-in, day-out basis. But if the Astros win tonight, you got to figure... Uh, this will go lengthy and go long. Um, but I, don't, I think the Braves can win tonight. Braves are flying right now. I could definitely see the Braves winning tonight. Sounds like Rosario will be back in the leadoff spot. And they'll put Soler down in the lineup tonight against the righty pitcher. We'll have to wait and see as far as that is concerned. Now, as far as the other extracurriculars, as far as the game goes, uh, the World Series last night uh, averaged in game one, and it took four hours and six minutes, more than that in a sec, had averaged 10.5 million viewers last night, which is, uh, uh, which is uh, really, uh, it's up from last year's Dodgers-Rays game, but 10.5 million is a, low, is a low number. I believe the Giants and the Tigers in 2012 did uh, 11, uh, 12 million. This did 10.5 that is not a good number for the world. So you got to be fair. Uh, that's, you know, the Seattle Saints game the other night did 13, 12, 13 million. Um, that is not a good rating uh, for game one of the World Series. It's not a surprise. The game was not competitive. It took forever, four hours and six minutes. The game had no pace to it. Uh, another reason why baseball has got so much work to do with the uh, pace of these games. I mean, four hours and six minutes for a 6-2 game. I mean, it was a, it was, it just, it was flawed. It just took, crawled, it crawled. I mean, at 11 o'clock at night, two hours and 45 minutes in the game, they were in the sixth inning, for crying out loud. I mean, it just took for absolute ever 
to get that game moving. It was over at about 12.30 at night. I mean, it's just too late on the East Coast. I mean, who's going to sit there uh, 12.30 on a weeknight to watch Astros Braves when it's 6-2 in the ninth inning? I mean, uh, yeah, you're just dead. You're not going to survive with that if you want a big national rating. That is not going to occur. Now, listen, last year's uh, rating was not good, and that, of course, is the rating um, uh, of the, uh, you know, with the, shortened, with the shortened season and the neutral site and everything else. So you got to throw that rating out. Uh, you have to look at it from a standpoint of some of the other ratings historically and what they've done. And I believe the Tigers and the Giants were the lowest game one ever. I'd have to look that up. Last year, Last year they had eight million, uh, nine million. Last year nine million. This year ten and a half. Now, that's a bad rating. Last year in a neutral site with Tampa, they did nine million in a sixty-game season. This year with fans. In a 162-game season, Houston and Atlanta, they did 10 and a half million. That's not good. It's not good. I don't know. I don't know. I know what the solution is. Uh, you know, with Verducci, what he told us yesterday, a quarter to six. I can pen and I can pen some solutions if they want me to, but it is a concern. We'll worry about that uh, in the off year. We're concerned right now about game two. The Astros and Braves, that's a must-get for Houston. We'll take a timeout. We continue. It's good to have you aboard. We're at Maid uh, on this Wednesday, the 27th of October. Back after this.